In this video, we're going to go over Kirchhoff's rules as well as resistors in series and parallel. All right, so the reason why we're going over Kirchhoff's rules is because they're important to understand how circuits work and how to calculate quantities such as resistance, current, and voltage in a circuit. There are two rules. The first is the junction rule. The junction rule states that the total current entering a junction has to equal the total current exiting that junction. So essentially it's a version of conservation of charge. However many of charge that enters the junction has to be the same amount of charge that exits the junction. For instance, in this circuit, if I1 is current entering the circuit and I2 and I3 are current that are exiting this junction, then you can write an equation which is I1 is equal to I2 plus I3 according to the junction rule. The next rule is the loop rule. The loop rule states that the sum of the voltages around any closed loop in a circuit is zero. So here we have a small circuit and it is a closed loop. So within this circuit, we know that the battery is supplying some voltage. So this is some voltage of the battery, let's call it V bat. And if there's a battery, that means it's going to be producing a current. The current's going to be passing through the circuit. As the current passes through each resistor, there's going to be a voltage drop according to Ohm's law, V equals IR. So that means that as the current passes through this resistor, which we can call this first resistor R1, and this second resistor R2, there's going to be a voltage drop of minus V1 and minus V2 across each of these resistors. So what the loop rule states is that the voltage of the battery minus V1 minus V2 has to be equal to zero. So essentially, whatever voltage the battery is supplying to the circuit has to be used up by the time you complete the loop. Okay. So now that we understand how these rules work, let's apply them to these situations where we're looking at resistors connected in different ways. So the first way of connecting resistors is to connect them in series. Now what it means to connect uh, circuit elements in series is to connect them in such a way that there's one common path for current flow. So essentially if current passes through one circuit element in series, it's going to pass through all the circuit elements in series. Now what's important about this is, if you think about it, well, if two amps of current passes through the first resistor, then two amps is also going to pass through the second resistor and also through the third resistor. So when you're dealing with circuit elements in series, what's important is to know that the currents are all equal. I1 is equal to I2, which is equal to I3, all right? So we can say here, current is the same in series. Now, how about the voltage? Well, the voltage, we can apply Kirchhoff's loop rule. The sum of the total voltages around a closed loop has to be equal to zero. So here, we know that the battery is supplying some voltage, right? So we can call this the voltage of the battery. And as the current passes through each of these resistors, there's going to be a voltage drop, minus V1, minus V2, minus V3 across these three resistors. So we can write that the voltage of the battery minus V1, V2, and V3 is going to be equal to zero. Or we can just say voltage of the battery is equal to V1, plus V2, plus V3. So essentially in series, you can add up the voltages to get the total voltage provided by the battery. All right, the last thing we want to talk about then is resistance. So how can we calculate the effective resistance when you have three resistors connected in series? Well, if you think about it, as current passes through one resistor, it already has to fight to get through that resistor, but then it has to pass through the next resistor and then the third resistor. So you end up having to pass through all three resistors. So essentially what that tells us is when you have resistors in series, the total resistance essentially is additive. 
So here the total resistance or the effective resistance is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. So this is particularly important to keep in mind. Resistors in series, the resistances add. Okay. So now let's take a look at resistors in parallel. So when resistors are connected in parallel, there are multiple separate paths for current to flow through. So in this case, if you have current flowing through the circuit or we're thinking about electrons, electrons are leaving the negative terminal and they're going to reach this junction. When they reach this junction by the junction rule, however amount of current enters that junction has to be the same amount of current that exits the junction. Of course, here we're talking about electrons, not junctions. They're opposites, but same idea. So if you have 50 electrons enter this junction and 20 electrons go through R1 and 20 electrons go through R2, that means 10 electrons has to go through R3. So the current essentially gets split up uh, among these three different pathways. So when we're looking at current in parallel, it's actually additive. So whatever total amount of current that you have is equal to the sum of I1 plus I2 plus I3 based on the junction rule. Okay, so how about the voltage? Well, again, the loop rule says the total voltage around any closed loop is equal to zero. And again, we have a battery that is supplying some voltage, but the interesting thing here is there are multiple closed loops here. There's one loop that you can follow that goes through R1. There's another loop you can follow that goes through R2. And there's a third loop you can follow that goes through R3. So in any one of these closed paths, you only pass through one resistor. And what that means is across that one resistor, you must have a voltage drop equal to that of the battery's voltage according to the loop rule. So what that means is when you're dealing with circuit elements in parallel, resistors in parallel, the voltage of the battery is equal to V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V3. So this is actually the important thing to keep in mind, which is the voltage is the same in parallel. And these things that I wrote in red, voltage and current, these are actually the two most important things about circuit elements in series and parallel. So anytime you have circuit elements in series, current is the same. Anytime you have circuit elements in parallel, voltage is the same. So that's the distinction there. So the last thing we can look at is resistance. Well, the interesting thing about adding resistors in parallel is you're actually opening up more paths for current to pass through which actually decreases the overall resistance. We can see this when we look at the equation for the total resistance. It is one over R2 is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3. You have this fraction set up which looks complicated, but we'll discuss how this works very soon. So let's just consider for instance, let's say all the resistors in these two setups are two ohm resistors. They all have the same resistance. If you connect three two ohm resistors in series, then the total resistance is two plus two plus two or six ohms. So essentially connecting resistors in series results in a larger resistance. What if we connect three two ohm resistors in parallel? Well then you get one over two plus one over two plus one over two, which is one half plus one half plus one half, which is three halves. Then you have to invert the three halves to get the total resistance, which is two third ohms. And what you should notice is that two third ohms is less than the two ohm resistance of any of the individual resistors. So essentially, when you connect resistors in parallel, you get a lower resistance. And when you connect resistors in series, you get a higher resistance. Okay. So these are the main difference between resistors in series and resistors in parallel. The last thing I want to mention though is while we're on the topic of 
series in parallel, let's talk about capacitors. We're going to look at capacitors in more detail in subsequent videos, but I at least want to talk about how to calculate the total capacitance if you had capacitors in series versus capacitors in parallel. So over here, if we had capacitors in series, it's essentially the opposite, that if you have capacitors in series, you get the fractions. 1 over the total capacitance is 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. And then you have the opposite in parallel. So if you have capacitors in parallel, then the capacitance is additive. So the total capacitance is just C1 plus C2 plus C3. Now, of course, you should also take note, you don't have to have three circuit elements. It doesn't have to be three resistors or three capacitors. It could be two resistors or four resistors. It can be any number, but you follow the same general pattern, whether it is additive or you have the fractions. Okay. So those are Kirchhoff's rules as well as resistors in series and resistors in parallel.